So where qualitative relied on description, quantitative research um, is, is the use of numbers for data analysis. And there are several types of quantitative research. Descriptive, which collects data to test a hypothesis or answer a question. Surveys with yes-no questions is a good example of that. Um, correlational, which is probably one of the most common where you attempt to find a relationship between two different things. Now, I understand your book has talked about how just because a relationship exists doesn't necessarily mean that it's a causal relationship. And quantitative experiments all use a standard format of generating a hypothesis to be proved or disproved. And this hypothesis must be provable by mathematical and statistical means. And it's the basis around which the whole experiment is designed. Randomization of any study group is essential so that you don't have that researcher bias. And a control group should be included whenever possible. A sound quantitative design should only manipulate one variable at a time. And by the way, that is very difficult to ensure that you're only manipulating one variable. Um, if you can't do that, it makes statistical analysis so cumbersome and open to question that, that it's just not a good idea. So you do want to only manipulate one variable at a time. Um, an example of that would be, again, uh, Milgram's experiment, how many people will zap somebody and to what level. And before we leave the, um, the discussion of quantitative and qualitative research, it's very important to note that many research projects actually involve both. So Walker, back in 1996, made this, um, um, did this study, and it was pretty interesting and has been uh, commented on quite a bit. He interviewed because he wondered if the gender differences in the control of a remote would affect the relationships of couples. And so he interviewed 36 couples and asked them, what percentage of the time do you have the remote? And on average, women only had the remote 20% of the time. Does that sound like your household? <laughs> this study was a combination, though, of quantitative and qualitative, even though it was mostly qualitative. So we got the percentage of time, which would be a quantitative component. But it was qualitative mostly because it included descriptive narrative about why the man had control of the remote such a large portion of the time. And some of the responses were pretty comical. Um, one man said, I just tell her what I want to watch, but if she wants to watch something really bad, then I let her watch it, whatever it is she wants to watch. Um, and another man said that um, he probably should let her have control, but it would just bug him too much. So in this study, it showed that what was supposed to be a leisure activity actually became a conflict for some couples. And so you can see um, how interesting that is that we have both the quantitative and the qualitative. I'm going to come back and talk about empirical questions.